What's up guys, it's Flamon and today I would like to present you much different video than usually because today I want to make opening of this box with Everlasting Wet Palette Painter complete pack. Okay, uh, but first I would like to present you my regular wet palette that I've been using for the past 10 years. As you, as you can see, it's constructed from a plastic box that contained olives, stuff with cottage cheese. And now we have layer with uh, baking paper and a sponge. So that is completely soaked with water. And that's it. That's what I've been using for the past 10 years. And it was working pretty nice. But I'm really interested in this, how Everlasting Wet Palette will behave. Maybe this is going to be my new favorite thing about painting miniatures. We will see. I didn't open it. So this is the first time that I will see what's, what's inside. Okay, okay. Perfectly designed. We will see. Unique paper surface. We will see about that too. Okay, what's inside the box? If you are curious about this, then this is a piece of cardboard that was in one of the IKEA boxes with uh, furniture that I bought. And I have it on my desk because this uh, reduced the amount of reflection of light that I have that are in other way shining in my eyes. Like, look at this. That's what I'm talking about. But when I put something like this in neutral gray color, and that was in the box, so I would throw it away anyway. So this helps me actually a lot because I'm not being blinded by the light. So if you're not doing something like this, you can consider that this because it's uh, pretty useful. You can use anything for that that is just not reflective. Okay, so let's open the box. What's, what's, okay. Okay, we will see. I really have no idea what I'm doing and what it is because I was using the wet palette that I just presented to you. And I was really not interested in products like this, but because uh, guys from Redgrass Games were so nice to send me uh, one of their wet palettes, I will, of course, gladly uh, test it. Because I think that this can be really cool. Okay. Let's open it. Okay, so okay, so I assume that this is made in this way in order to make the sponge don't move too much, I guess. Okay, I understand that this is a rubber rubber band. I don't know; it's still cause can be called rubber band, but I understand that this goes here. Okay. Okay, that's comfortable for solution when you're traveling with your and you want to paint somewhere else, like before contests. When usually, when you open your boxes in in a hotel, then you see that some paint usually chipped off the miniature. Okay, so this is one hydration foam part, long lasting. Naturally mold resistant, neutral gray, limits the growth of molds to significantly neutralize odors. Rinse, rinse it regularly with water. Do not use alcohol or, or cleaning agent. Well, I was I was cleaning my my sponges with everything that is dangerous and alcoholic also. So I will have to change my habits. If this will be a game changer. Okay. 
Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, so this is, wow, this is even, it's cold. It, and it seems, it smells like, I don't know, like paint, but for what? Okay, it's, it's completely different than what I was using, because I was using like regular sponge. And this is, this is completely different. Okay, now I'm, now I'm, okay, now I'm really, really curious how this will behave. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, these are hydration papers. And this is another wet palette, hydration foam part. Okay, and what is this? Wavy. Okay, I have no idea what this means. Okay, but I saw something about this on the box. Okay, so... Okay, it's magnetized. Okay, it is. But does it stick everywhere? Not everywhere, but... Okay. Okay, so it sticks to these three places. Okay, this can be actually pretty useful because I've been using uh, also different materials than just paints for my for my paintings. I've been using sometimes uh, also inks, uh, not these inks that you that you are thinking about. Like I was using like Winsor Newton ink for making very dark blue colors on my uh, Chaos Demon Champion. This guy that has uh, flame between his horns. I painted it like so many years ago. And yeah, and then I, I'm pouring this kind of ink in something like this. Also when I'm using a lot of glazes, sometimes I also prefer to pay, pour it in and it's like this, but I've been using something uh, much more common. I've been using caps for this. But maybe, maybe this is better. It, it probably is. Because it's made of something completely different. Okay, so, okay, we've got this. I have also this handle. And I'm yeah I'm working today on my warm stab or warm spot chaos warrior, and especially on the spear. Finally, I guess the spear will be uh, the one element that Nurgle players should be happy about. It will be rusty, dirty, and has a weird mutated hand. So yeah, so yeah, this is uh, this is pretty helpful for the for elements like this. As you know, I prefer to pin my miniatures with uh, paper clips and have them on on uh, on car uh, on cork yeah on wine corks on and stuff like this sorry sometimes you just uh, forget word but i think that for painting uh, but when i'm painting um, single elements like this spear i like to glue it to surface of something and it usually was something made of cork and it didn't work very well because it didn't stick right but I think with this handle this will work nice it, today is literally the first day that I'm using it so I cannot tell anything about that yet but I think that for painting bases and for this I will find this useful Yes, I will tell you after today what I think about this, but I think that for this specific task, this will work very good with my techniques. Okay, so now I guess, uh, okay, oh, let's open everlasting hydration papers. Okay, for acrylic paints only, okay. This is so professional, everything that I had 
so far. Let me show you my sheets. My sheets look like this because this is baking paper. Uh, the color is not not great because it's it would be be much better to have uh, white or gray color because uh, then the colors of uh, paint looks different on your uh, on your palette. So these are white. Mine are brown because I bought the cheapest uh, cheapest baking paper that they had in the store, and it worked really good. Okay, okay. Why why is this acting like this? Does this have sides that I should use or what? Now it's acting like this. It's like, what? Why does this do it? Why, why is this happening? It's like I just change your position and you're doing the same thing again. Okay, but I'm pretty sure this will change when I will uh, soak the sponge in water. So, okay, let me let me organize this. Okay, so I have water and let's see how much can I pour in here. Okay. I don't know, maybe it's too, oh, okay, it's it hmm. I think it will be too much, but I don't know. Maybe this sponge can suck, can absorb a lot of it, most of it, maybe even. Let's see, let's give it time to work its magic. I hope it doesn't have sides, it's just, and you can absorb it. Now I feel that my flat, my apartment is maybe crooked because most of water is on the left side. I had suspicions like this, but do I have a proof now? I don't know, should I act like this? Or will it absorb the water no matter what I will do? And how much can it absorb? It's so hot today. It's I think it should okay, okay. It's it it absorbed everything, but and I think that everything is not enough, especially in this heat. So let's add a bit more. Should I do this? I just let it do it in its own time. When you have normal sponge, you, you do push it, like squeeze it like this, and then it absorbs water much faster. But I'm not, I'm not sure if this is the same case with this. Or maybe I should turn it upside, upside down now. Drink the water, drink. You need this today. We all need water today. Lots of it. Oh, okay, logo is here. Let's make the logo more visible. Why not? Okay, so this side looks exactly like the other side. Mm hmm. I think it's still thirsty. How much can you absorb? It's a really small sponge, so I'm not sure. When it will be full. Okay, I will uh, I will pause the record right now and do more of the more of this, and uh, I will see you in a moment when I'm sure when the uh, sponge will be ready because I 
think it should all be gray like this gray area okay okay after a few more minutes and plenty of squeezes more i think that it's ready to be used i have water on the sides i'm not sure if it's good or bad when i was using my regular palette it was not a problem okay okay why why is this moving okay i think that you cannot have too much water on this palette okay let's, let's remove it okay okay now now it looks much better i wonder how this will and deal with the heat that we have today okay i i will leave it in here but just for fun i won't use it i'm pretty sure that i won't okay so what i wanted to do today uh, is uh, well many many things actually but Let's focus on, on painting. Uh, this, what you can see here, are just uh, pieces of paper that I'm using to, let's say, sharpen my brush. Uh, the first thing I do after I clean it, I remove a bit of water in this uh, paper towel. Let's call it paper towel. And then I, when I have a uh, paint on my brush I sharpen it like this to make a uh, more pointy end okay so let's see how this will be behave let's use black gray this is so new and neutral gray that just exploded. I blame the heat. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, great. And I have now oh, neutral gray on my finger. on my thumb okay this is completely different because uh, it's much bigger than anything I used before so I I think I will change the position of the palette okay let's have it in here Okay, and now my camera. Okay, I was I was really worried that I won't have sharp uh, image, but here it is. Let's see. I want the handle of this um, of the spear to be made of old wood, but uh, I want to have specific uh, like uh, pine wood, something like this. Uh, obviously that would be a bad choice because it's not strong wood it's uh, rather fragile one of the worst woods that you can imagine for making spear of but on the other hand this wood when it gets old it's it's basically gray with just a few places where you can see a tiny amount of brown color so I think, so I want to use this color for the handle because I think it will look more interesting and you will be able to uh, better feel that this is uh, old wood. Uh, oak, for example, would be still brown, so for very long time. And this wouldn't be the same thing. We want to make this 
would look like it's old. I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing because I was not actually planning to test the uh, palette. I was planning to just to just open it, but well, here we are. I will paint just a tiny uh, area just to see how it will work. So yeah, there are moments when I don't have anything to say. Yeah, it happens sometimes. Okay, so far I'm using this for just a moment, but I'm happy with it so far. Okay, so mm, the thing when you're painting uh, things that are not metallic, like this wood, is that you don't want to make too strong contrast of them because uh, then they will look unnatural. Of course, I, I have problem with this. I'm addicted to strong contrast, so it's not easy for me. But I'm trying and I will try to make it better on this handle. Okay, so now I'm mixing neutral gray with black gray and with this mixture I will paint tiny stripes around this uh, places where neutral gray ends my my brush unfortunately is dying I need a new one and it's too hard to go to wash up so I will have to deal with this one for a while. Why is it moving? Okay, so as you can see, I'm create I'm painting tiny stripes with just the tip of my brush. Thanks to this, I'm not only creating transition between black gray and neutral gray, but I also create structure on the surface of this material. Okay. Now I can see that this handle keeps turning if you don't hold it with your hand. Okay, now that I have a small um, part of this handle painted, I can see that this gray is way too dark to imitate old wood. So I need to mix it with white paint. Uh, I'm using polycolor for white. It's a normal paint that you can get in 
in an art shop. How you can see it. I like to test paints like this because uh, because I I think they can have better pigment. Okay, let's mix it with neutral gray. So far, I can say I'm very happy with this uh, paper sheet on this wet palette because the mixing is very pleasant. It's, it's, it's really good. It's really nice. Maybe I should add a bit more white. Because sometimes when I'm... Uh, we'll see how it will behave when I will use it uh, a bit longer because on my wet palette uh, the problem is that if you're mixing too long on a paper sheet that is lying there for a, for quite some time, you can even make a hole in it. Okay, let's highlight this. Once again, I'm painting tiny stripes, creating structure. It makes it makes it uh, look like it was. It's a bit worn off, and in this. Uh, case it's of course very good to make it look like it okay this uh, tonation is much better Stop moving! Oh my god! Uh, if I will want to use this handle more often, I will have to uh, learn to hold it with my finger. Otherwise, as you can see, it's moving. Okay, a bit more white in here because here I have reflection of light that I prepared with white paint. So far, I'm happy with it. Now let's see how it will behave with uh, when I will want to make some brown glazes over it. I'm not sure what to do. I'm improvising. Uh, what color should I use? Blood brown sounds about right. And burnt number two. Okay, so let's see these two paints. Burnt Ember and Flat Brown. I will start with this. This is very pale, dark and pale brown. Because um, old... Oh my god, stop, stop! Uh, oh my god. Of course I wanted just a little bit. And I have way too much. Okay, let's make this shape. 
look a bit better before we start this so as you can see it's oh, this shape so as you can see it's not easy to avoid creating strong contrast okay now let's add a bit water to it and see how it okay this is how it behaves on the palette oh no it went to oh no 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 don't go there okay not good so you cannot work on the edges with it that's that's not great Okay, so in situations like this. Okay, so when I'm painting glazes, um, now I'm removing a bit of paint on, in a piece of paper. Okay, as you can see, I did it in, with these movements to keep a pointy end of my, to keep the tip of my brush pointy. Okay, and now this uh, wood needs a bit of brown glazes because like i said it's this uh, type of wood is not is gray but it's not entirely gray it has places when it's brown so when we will make glazes with this color it will add a bit of brown formations to it so i will add it mostly in mid tones and in the shadows It's so hard uh, that, that layers of glaze are disappearing very quickly. Okay, now I will add a bit of flat brown. I'm scared to pour it anywhere. I will dilute it a little bit. Okay. Now I will remove most of it in a piece of paper. And now I will add a bit of just a few stripes with it in the shaded areas. Because like I said, I want this to be more brown. Wood like this has places where it's brown, it's not only gray, it also has brown color in shaded areas and in uh, uh, chaotic places. Um, it's not very easy to represent such wood on a miniature. That's why I, in situations like this, I prefer to locate brown tonations in shaded areas. As you can see now, I'm painting tiny stripes. Because wood is irregular, so I'm placing it also in irregular places. Now let's fix this shape a little bit. a bit more in the shadows. Okay. I'll finish this video now. My conclusion is that it's really cool. It's a really cool thing, but you cannot dilute your paint in this area close to the edge of this paper. Shit. Paint behaves very good on the surface of this paper sheet. Uh, mixing is very comfortable. So far it's wet enough. It's not drying to quit. Paint has very good consistency.
it's very big it's it's much bigger than my than my palette i used to use this one that is much smaller i'm very happy that this palette turned out to be very cool i'm really happy that guys from red grass decided to uh, send send one to me it's very nice okay so in conclusion i can honestly say that i enjoy using this wet palette i will use it as my main wet palette from now on and yeah it's a it's a cool product if you are thinking about getting one it's it's really really good so okay i hope you enjoyed this video and i'm very sorry for the sound quality i tried to improve something and it didn't work how i would like it to work so yeah i'm really sorry about that um i hope you enjoyed it anyway and see ya bye